Well, I'm calling that a success. Well, friends, I built this channel to share the cool stuff we're building and show you the kinds of things our shop is capable of. A couple of the things that I avoid on the channel are swearing and politics. I just want to take a couple of minutes before we get started to talk about data science. Now we have known for a long time that if the service costs money, you are the customer. If the service is free, you are the product. If you have the Facebook or Messenger app installed on your phone, the app will turn on your microphone and camera and listen to you. You'll then be fed ads based upon what the app hears. You can prove this to yourself by having the phone on and saying words that you would not normally say, like table saw or nose hair trimmer. Do this a couple of times a day and you will begin to see ads for that thing in a few days. You don't even have to be using the app for this to occur, and Facebook and Messenger are not the only ones who do it. If the app is simply installed on your phone, it will do this all the time. I recently learned of something very disturbing that I just have to share with you. This concept of us being the product has gone far beyond what most of us have ever imagined. Every time you answer a quiz on Facebook or somewhere else, that information is put into a profile on you. It's then cross-referenced with all your friends who answered the same quiz and even compared to things you buy on Amazon, eBay, and other places. Using this data, they are able to predict that Republicans will most likely use toothpaste brand X and Democrats will most likely use soap brand Y. This is being done by independent data science companies and what they have developed is truly frightening. Using this data, they can identify ways in which you can be persuaded. Then they will bombard you with ads until you think the way they want you to think. This was done in the Obama campaign, the Trump campaign, and the Brexit campaign. Now, I don't want to talk about any particular politician, because frankly, I think that once they're in power, all they care about are their super rich cronies and getting reelected, while people like you and I pay for it all. There are no good guys anymore, and we're being manipulated in ways we're not even aware of. There's a really good movie on Netflix about it called The Great Hack. I strongly recommend you watch it. It features several former employees from these data science companies who finally came to the realization that what they have done is created a monster that they can no longer control. That's enough of that. We have a sticker shout out to Dave over at CamStand, and I'll leave links to The Great Hack and Dave's channel in the doobly-doo below. Today we are building a wine bottle carrier for my bike, so let's get on to that. So the local Goodwill had some leather belts and I thought that would be the perfect thing for my wine bottle carrier on my bike. I got some uh, copper rivets. For those of you that don't know, I am what they call a wine aficionado, not to be confused with a wine connoisseur. A wine connoisseur knows what he's doing, an aficionado simply knows what he likes. So we have here a bottle of Tobin James Legrine, which is an excellent wine if you ever get a chance to taste any of it. Uh, the reason I've chosen this one is because this is the tallest shoulder bottle that I have. Now what a shoulder bottle is, is a bottle that has this shoulder on the top of it. And uh, the reason they use this type of bottle is when you get down to the end of the pour, you leave a little bit in there and if there's any sediment, that stays in the bottle. You should never upend a shoulder bottle. We'll begin by estimating how much of the belt we're going to use to hold the bottle. And I want to come here to where the neck of the bottle is going to be and split this right down the middle. And this is the way I want it to fit over. So I'm going to need to split a little more. Okay, that is looking good. I'm going to use one of these belt holes. Fold that over and rivet it. Now we'll come in with an ice pick and mark where that hole is going to be. Then follow up with a wad punch to create the hole.
Then we'll come in, use a little pry bar to hold that washer down. And then peen off that rivet head. That is nice and secure. Now we'll make sure that still fits, and it does. That's step one. Now we want a couple of loops around the bottle. And come in here and punch another hole with our wad punch again. Alright, that fits over there just nice. That looks like a pretty good place to me. Alright, so let's see if this thing's gonna go together like we hope. Alright, that, that's in there, good. Now we just need a way to attach it to the bike. And I think we'll use these. So I want this wine bottle carrier for my Fixie, which is a fixed gear bike. It uh, only has a brake on the front of it. But on some of my other bikes, i got a brake cable running right along the top tube. So I want to make sure that this doesn't clamp that cable. Now I also don't want it to scratch my powder coat paint job. So we'll come down here and we'll we'll just use this this uh, we'll just use this belt hole for the rivet. <clears throat> now it turns out I had enough extra leather to make another one of these bands, so I'm going to put another one on there. Well, there it is. Let's see if it still works. All right, that's looking good. Let's go get the bike. Well, here it is. And let me give you a little tour of the bike before we put the wine carrier on it. <clears throat> yeah, we'll start here at the front. We're using uh, Schwalbe Lugano. Uh, thorn resistant tires, We've got Sturmy Archer hub, We've got this headlight I built, uh, it's 5,000 lumens and it's got this massive battery bag here that'll let it burn for six hours. Sturmy Archer locking brake lever, got my bell up there, my cup holder, my shifter. Hold on, I said it was fixed gear, didn't I? It is. Three speed fixed gear. Sturmy Archer SX3 Three speed fix gear. Got my flask holder and I'm a fan of power grip pedals. Got some more lighting in the back. My bike balls, they light up too. My little gremlin bell. This frame lock is every bit as strong as a regular padlock and that and a cable together keep the bike secure. 
Back here, this thing here is made by Surly. It's called a tug nut. It's a chain tensioning device and it will open a beer. You can see the bottle opener is right there. And this is a pretty cool Shimano Nexus chain that I have on it. Well, I'm calling that a success. That is looking good. Well, that came together just great, and I can think of no better way to celebrate than with a glass of wine. So, cheers. Anyway, that's all for this time. Thanks for stopping in. I'm happy to answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you get a notice every time I release a new video. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.